Hello YouTube Pipe Smokers, Eric here, the Blue Collar Pipe Smoker. It is great to be with you. I wanted to take a break from doing my uh, online courses. Um, my brain is overloaded and I haven't thought or had to think for weeks because uh, I've been on summer break. So now that I'm being asked to think and process and type about things, my, uh, my brain is starting to hurt. So I thought it'd be a good time to take a break and do a review of a tobacco that Art, Pipes and Spirits, sent me yesterday. Now, out of all the blends he sent me, the one I had to try, the very first one I had to try immediately, was Mixture 79. Uh, if you watched the video of me unboxing those tobaccos yesterday, um, I freaked out when I saw this because uh, Sergeant Savinelli and I were having a conversation about this. Somehow we got on the subject of codger blends, and he brought up, man, he's like, have you ever had Mixture 79? And I said no, and um, uh, he had mentioned that um, Cane Rod Piper and the Arful Codger, they absolutely love Mixture 79. And uh, I said, Sarge, I said, I heard it tastes like soap. And he says, uh, he goes, Eric, he says, I kid you not. He goes, you know what that stuff smells like? I said, what's that? He says, it smells like the bottom of an old lady's purse. <laughs> now, I didn't know what he meant until uh, I smelled this. And that's why I was laughing so hard in the video, because he, we were talking about this early in the day. And of all things that shows up in that box is a pouch of this. So that's why I got the biggest kick out of that. And I was just like, oh, Sarge, look what I got, you know. But uh, Mixture 79, let's look at the description on this. And it says, okay, aromatic mixture, uh, a unique rugged cut blended with the finest aromatic burley and Virginia tobaccos available. Always a smooth smoke. Wait a minute, that's velvet. Uh, a smooth smoke without a bite. Now this is manufactured we could see that there. This is manufactured by the Sutliff Tobacco Company, which is distributed by our Sutliff, which is a McBaron company. So first thing that runs through my mind when I hear Sutliff or McBaron is, you know, McBaron tobaccos, in my opinion, from everything that I have um, uh, tasted from McBaron, whether it's McBaron Virginia Number no. 1 or uh, McBaron uh, Plum Cake, um, what else have I had from McBaron? Um, vintage Syrian. I'm a big fan of, uh, of McBaron blends. So I have to imagine that everything in here, you know, was quality going into it. And when you open this up, when you open this up, you can see the, this is an extremely, uh, coarse type of tobacco. Um, it almost looks like granola. Well, let me turn this light on here. Maybe that'll, you guys see that? It almost looks like granola. It's, it's really chunky uh, stuff. Um, and then of course, um, <laughs> the pouch note. When you smell this, okay, when you smell this, <laughs> Sarge, you were correct. <laughs> it does smell like the bottom of an old lady's purse. Um, my dad said that uh, he called it rose hips. Rose hips, he said. It smells like rose hips. Um, I remember hugging old ladies like at wakes and funerals or whatever. Or, you know, maybe relatives that were very old back in the day that smelled like this. Uh, and it's a very floral very flowery topping that they put on this. I think that um, the old ladies back then, I don't know if they just bought, uh, you know, because they were growing up through the Depression, so they didn't think spending a lot of money on perfume was necessary. So I think maybe they bought cheap perfumes or like a very floral type smelling perfume, or maybe he's right. Maybe they threw stuff like a potpourri type little packet in their purse to keep it fresh smelling. I don't know. I don't know. But you were right, Sarge. This does smell exactly like an old lady's purse. Um, and I remember 
I sent Sarge a picture of me and I was like, like this yesterday on the on the balcony <laughs> smoking this. He's like, well, and I go, well, Sarge, you're right. <laughs> it smells like an old lady's purse. Um, I think my exact words are, Sarge, I think I've hugged women at wakes when I was like very little that smelled like this. But anyways, let's get into the taste of it. Um, the taste, the taste is actually a lot better than it smells. Um, I ended up having two bowls of this last night on the balcony with this Missouri Meerschaum Mark Twain. Now this is actually one from the drought era. You could always tell because it has this wooden uh, plug with a stamp on it. And these are smaller, okay? So it's actually a very nice smoke. It's a small cob uh, with a small bowl, so it's perfect for a quick smoke. But I ended up enjoying Mixer 79 enough that I was just like, you know what, I'm gonna give it another uh, bowl full and give it a try. But the, probably the biggest standout in the blend itself is, uh, or the, the, the toasted burleys that are inside of this. Um, there is some very coarse cut pieces of, you could tell there's like flake of Virginia flake in here. Um, but overall, it's just like this real thick, hang on, oatmeal looking, but the, the biggest uh, star in this blend is the, is the toasted burley. But it does have a, a, an incredibly unique floral topping on it. Uh, it's really hard to describe other than it just smells like uh, dried out roses. That's what it smells like. It smells like a dried out rose. So Sarge had recommended don't don't smoke it in a briar because he says that's floral scent will really ghost the pipe. So um, I ended up going with a cob. And uh, from now on, I'm going to dedicate this cob uh, to that blend. But, you know, uh, should you run out and buy it? Should you... Uh, throw this in your next order when you go to smoking pipes or pipes and cigars. Well, I'll tell you this. If you really like Codger blends, you know, if you really love Half and Half and Granger and Velvet, um, but you also have a wide palate, you're not afraid to try new blends, um, and, you know, no matter what people say about certain blends, you're still willing to try them. If you're that type of a person, I would say try Mixture 79. I mean... This was the go-to blend. I read online that Hugh Hefner was a pretty big fan of uh, Mixture 79. Also, rumor has it that the chairman of the board himself, Mr. Frank Sinatra, was a big fan of uh, Mixture 79. So, and when I smoked it, I kind of had the same uh, thoughts going through my head as when I smoked Edward G. Robinson. Uh, that tobacco, these tobaccos were made at a time when, you know, America was a burly country. Uh, the burly blend ruled the shelves across every general store and, um, you know, your, your corner stores, grocery stores, things like that. And you could see a tobacconist in a, a big city that would probably take a classic American blend and add things to it for flavor and aroma and pizzazz. And, um, you know, I could see how adding that floral topping, like if you're in a room full of people, you know, they're like, oh, well, Mixer 79 is for the distinguished gentleman who wants that aroma to go through the room and attract the ladies. You know, I, I could see how that uh, aroma found its way into this mixture and, and why it makes it unique and, you know, um, it was probably marketed that way, I'm guessing. But um, very interesting tobacco. Um, would I smoke this for the rest of my life and buy tubs of it like the Artful Codger? Probably not. Um, is this fun to try? Absolutely. Um, would I buy a pouch of it again? Maybe. We'll have to see how it goes as time goes on. But if you're an old Codger at heart, you really are adventurous, you like to try new things, and uh, the floral won't doesn't bother you or that's not scaring you away, then give it a shot. Um, the quality of the tobaccos in it, I thought were really good. 
Um, if you can get past the floral topping on it, then I would say you're probably going to enjoy all the tobaccos. I thought that the tobaccos were of really good quality. So, art, pipes and spirits. Thank you for sending that to me. I know um, I've heard a lot of uh, great things about it from the Artful Codger. I've also heard a lot of negative things about it from maybe guys online or, oh, that tastes like soap or, you know, it tastes like, uh, uh, it tastes like uh, grandma's potpourri dish in the bathroom, whatever. Um, I found it to taste a lot better than it smelled. So thank you, Art. And until next time, you two pipe smokers, I will talk to you soon.